my name is Owen. I'm one of the worker owners here at Urbane Cyclists, and today we're taking a look at two modern takes on drop bar bikes for off-road. So in this video, we're gonna dive in a little bit, talk about some of the features and differences between the Surly Grappler as well as the Marin Gestalt XR. We're also gonna talk a little bit about the history behind drop bars off-road, dirt drops, and some of the history in early mountain biking. So please use the chapters if you wanna navigate or skip ahead uh, for any specifics, and hope you enjoy. So we're gonna get started here by looking at some kind of broad strokes frame features, overall kind of frame styles between these two models to kind of get like a cursory understanding of each bike. So um, if we're comparing with something like a just a conventional gravel bike, you can kind of sum up and call a conventional gravel bike like a road bike with big tires. The angles are relaxed a little, but these start to look a little more extreme and I would liken both the Grappler from Surly and the Marin Gestalt XR is a little more in line with a cross-country mountain bike. Um, both obviously have no suspension. Uh, we differ a little with frame materials, the Surly being full steel, the Natch tubing, so that's steel frame, steel fork. The Marin behind me is an aluminum frame, Series 3, with a carbon fiber fork. Both bikes are going to be using through axles, front and rear. Both bikes come obviously with drop bars. Both come with dropper seat posts, which is definitely a kind of rowdy, fun, uh, fun addition to any gravel or dirt road riding you're going to be doing. So before we get started too much in kind of the analysis and overall specifics of mounting points and componentry, uh, I think it's very helpful to actually hear what the companies describe the bike as to really help us understanding what their intended use is going to be. So the Marin Gestalt XR is described as adventure on and off road. The Gestalt XR is our hard charging, rough and rowdy take on what gravel and adventure bikes can do. Break off the fire road down the single track and charge further and faster than ever before, all while keeping the versatility, challenge and fun of a bike with drop handlebars. The Gestalt X is built with a longer than usual wheelbase, slack like your mountain bike head angle, low slung frame, wide bars, short stem, big and chunky tires with room for up to 50 millimeters on 700C or 54 millimeters with a 650B wheel set. The Surly Grappler is described as a trail bike tailored for drop bars. Off-road enthusiasts have been Frankensteining drop bars onto trail bikes for decades, so we designed the Grappler to scratch that itch with a little more precision. Engineered first and foremost are in a stable and comfortable drop bar hand position. Its trail-ready geo provides a spirited ride on mixed terrain. Cleared for girthy tires and decorated with an array of mounts for hauling your daily provisions and overnight gear, the Grappler is ready to take you and your paraphernalia down that overgrown fire road for an exosensory experience. There's nothing to be afraid of, probably. So clearly both of these bikes are designed with a bit of an adventure in mind and they aren't kind of focusing on necessarily kind of that race mindset. But I think to really understand what the origins of this style of bike is, we're gonna look at some of the history behind dirt drops and mountain bikes with drop bars. So to fully understand some of these modern takes on uh, drop bars off-road, I think it's important to understand a little of the history behind them. So we're gonna do a kind of brief history about some of the origins of drop bars on mountain bikes. So in 1982 in Marin County, the same Marin County that's the namesake of Marin Bikes, and they're largely considered the birthplace of mountain biking. We saw a WTB form. Steve Potts, Mark Slate, and Charlie Cunningham formed this company, uh, Wilderness Trail Bikes, and they produced uh, a range of bike components, but one of the, I think the most important for the kind of lineage of these drop bar bikes would be the RM2 handlebar. The RM2 handlebar was a flared drop bar made by Nitto, and it was later actually licensed to Specialized, and we saw it appear on the later mass-produced Specialized Rock Combo, which was probably the largest production run of a dirt drop style bike in 1989. Before this time, we saw both uh, founders of WTB, Steve Potts and Charlie Cunningham, making beautiful custom bikes specifically around the dirt drop mindset. What's notable about these, they look very akin to early mountain bikes, but they have really tall gooseneck style stems on them, which bring the drops much taller than a modern drop bar. 
So the other defining feature of a dirt drop from this era versus a modern uh, flared drop bar would be the primary position is actually in the hooks as opposed to up on top on the hoods. If you look at some of these older historical setups, the hood position is effectively unusable. You're getting the most leverage in the hook position uh, with maximum leverage on the brakes. And another reason for that was the brakes of the day were nothing like what we have now, so they had to maximize leverage in order to ride off-road. So probably the most popular rider we saw professionally uh, in roughly this era would be John Tomac, who's famously seen uh, mountain biking with various different setups. And a big reason for this was he was also uh, cross-disciplinary, so he was experimenting with drop bars on mountain bikes, partially because he also had a history uh, with road riding. After the early 90s, we saw what I would like to refer to as the dark era. We didn't see any real serious ventures into production drop bar bikes uh, with large tires. We started to see drop bars being almost exclusively road, and road became much thinner tires. We saw mountain bikes making their own divergence and kind of changing as time goes. Uh, and we only saw drop bars on Frankenstein, or sometimes we referred to them as monster cross builds. So these were almost all kind of homebrew things. Uh, there were a few options on the market later uh, by some smaller makers, but by and large, we didn't see production bikes coming in this orientation. So I would consider drop bars in the early 2000s and both the late 90s pretty niche and quite fringe in its usage. Uh, then we get to, to the 2008, and in 2008, the Salsa Fargo came around. And the Salsa Fargo was one of the first proprietary, like, bike packing bikes. It was designed around the Tour Divide. It was also designed in conjunction with the Salsa Wood Chipper Handlebar, which is a modern take on a dirt drop. So we had a super flared bar designed to be short, upright, nice and tall, and designed to be ridden in the drops with a nice broad stance, like we want to see on pretty much all modern bikes now. Uh, after the, the Fargo kind of started to gain popularity, we've now seen many different takes from many different brands uh, with large volume tires and drop bars. And the reason we're bringing this up today is, so instead of seeing modern gravel bikes that look like road bikes with big tires, we're now seeing modern takes on off-road bikes that are more in line with what we'll see from cross-country bikes. So we see slacker head tube angles, uh, much longer wheelbases, and a much progressive kind of design process to fully maximize the potential of drop bars for off-road. So the reason we're grouping both the Surly Grappler and the Marin Gestalt XR is uh, I think of these as a bit of a Venn diagram is often my description. We have on one side we have gravel bikes informed by road bikes, and then we have off-road bikes with drop bars informed more by mountain bikes. And these would be more so the latter, where their angles are going to be more on par with what we'll see in modern cross-country bikes, but then with some kind of tweaking to optimize them for drop handlebars. Uh, what we get from this is instead of just having a road bike that kind of can handle some gravel, is we get a seriously rugged positioning on the bike, uh, much more rugged tires, better ground clearance, uh, obviously on something like the Grappler, we're going to have much lower gearing design for much more intensive elevation. So we have a kind of more like open door of adventure with these bikes instead of being kind of focused in as uh, a road bike adjacent bike for folks. So I find these appeal more to someone who just wants to get out and try something new. Uh, but I think they're also undervalued as starter bikes because you can do a bit of everything and more than you could on a traditional just straight shooting gravel bike. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I for one am super excited with both these takes on some off-road kind of out of the box thinking uh, around drop bar bikes. It's one of my favorite subjects. It's probably, I think, one of the most fun and different ways to approach riding off-road and through mixed terrain. If you have any further questions, please let us know in the comments and let us know what you think of this video. What do you want to see next?